Today, this is Elise. She'll also be a shotgunner. Maggie, shotgunner too. Our drivers today are Ben on Tick and Top. We got Taylor on Rowdy and Rebel, and we got Dylan on Rock and Roll down there. Uh, this, these horses weigh about, give or take, 2,000 pounds a piece. So it's about 4,000 pounds of horse pulling about the same amount of weight of wagon through those racks right there. If we hit, those things are dug about three feet in the ground. So if one of the stagecoaches hits it, your hand gets caught between that, it's not gonna end well. So we like to say keep your hands, your feet, your kids, your in-laws, anything you don't wanna lose on the ride at all times. Uh, and similarly to that, those wheels look very tempting to touch. They look cool when they're spinning. Please don't touch them unless you can hold 8,000 pounds in your hand or you've got rubber arms. Again, might not end well for us. Lastly, that part up there it says Yellowstone Park got black bar everybody see that mm -hmm. all right if you're over four foot ten tall and don't consciously duck your head when you're getting in there you're gonna hit it it's gonna hurt ask me how I know <laughs> all right finally some fun stuff here that back seat that we got on the top right there is called the tally ho seat we do let people sit up there we can hold about six people up there you do have to be 12 years or older to ride in the top of that though <laughs> so if you do want to ride in the tally ho just hang out towards the back of the line and then we'll get everybody in there. Best view in the park. Now, it don't seem like it's gonna rain today, but if it does, just keep in mind the seat you choose for this ride is the seat you will have until we get back here. We're gonna go out into the valley. We'll stop off, take some pictures. Uh, so don't worry about taking pictures here. We'll take some really good pictures for you out there. And then one of us is gonna give you some, some history lesson on the uh, stagecoach in the park and how you guys have joined that history. So uh, if I can get everybody to break off into the group they came with, and then we'll go ahead and start assigning coaches based off of that. Come on there. <laughs> Until we meet again. Happy. We're from Texas. Oh, Texas. Yeah, what about Oakland, you? All? California. Oh, okay. Which is nice. Fun. Yeah. Before kids, did I you, lived there. Oh, did you live? Did you live by the beach or? Yeah, oh. like six blocks off the beach. Wow, so that's nice. nice. Yeah. Then we had kids, and it was too expensive. And. Yeah. Thank you. Did you roller skate down? This I didn't. Ball ball. I should have. <laughs> I had a bike. I did bike. <laughs> Just going through Mammoth, stop and do the uh, upper geyser trail okay. at Mammoth, the loop. Yep. You can drive around, but you can get out and walk. There we go. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, Rebel. Yay. We got lucky on the old people trail. Rick, do you want to talk something? Oh, hey, so we're on the stagecoach now, headed out to the happy yeah, trail. Yeah, do the trail. Let's we'll see really we're done. Beautiful. Here we go. We stopped an animal and we see him and saw a bison walking right in the middle. Right down the road. Uh, we saw some bison in Grand Teton. We saw them there. We've seen, I think, elephant animals up in here. Oh, we got some bear in our camp last night. Oh, <laughs> oh, <wow. yeah. laughs> I was going to the bathroom and I rely on the ice. Oh, God, I thought I saw something. Okay, we better go fast. Yeah, you don't want to see it, yeah. We were standing on the floor. I'm like, oh okay, I, I better go fast. Are you in the Tetons for a day? Yes. We're going there Friday. Oh, yeah. That was cool. The drive's beautiful. It was oh, sunny. I, I know you have to go see it, though. Waterfall. I had a whole waterfall. Yeah, yeah. You're going through Twin Falls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you might, actually... yeah, watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. If you have time, go to Craters of the Moon. Craters of the Moon. Craters of the Moon, yeah. of the moon and go into the, the cave. Uh -huh. It's in between uh, Idaho Falls and Twin Falls. Okay. Yeah, it's a national park. It's very hot, but it. Oh, it's just so cool. Yeah. Okay, great. It's all the lava. So you, get to, yeah. you get to Twin Falls. Oh, oh it's beautiful. Centennial Falls. It's kind of, it's Twin Falls. The parks are nice, but they're like the city's built right.
Oh, man, okay. yeah, we'll he did what I can't see. I was going to say, we'll try to warn you. And we'll All tell right. you about the bear chasing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're up high enough, though. Yeah. But here's our little hill going down off the road. Oh, that's a beautiful horse of that bear. I will say if you try to go between West Thumb and um, what was the other one? Old Faithful and West Thumb. Oh, the little brother? Huh? No, uh, yeah, but Old Faithful and West Thumb, the road is that. So that's a long, lonesome one there. Yeah, it is. I noticed that they don't do nothing. Oh, there's one right there. It's pretty close. Oh, that's close, right? Oh, yeah. Well, that's all. You'll be fine. Just push the button in. Yeah. yeah. I like this hat. We're just getting a house. Well, not now. <laughs> she's a teenager. Yeah. She's a, like, she's a good one. I've got four, and she's the easiest. So okay. I don't worry about her. The other one's inside. I worry about her. and the corn goats were headbutting and kicking really? our car. Yes. <laughs> and it dented it. Well, because really? you can feed them, and as soon as you stop feeding them, they start kicking oh, and headbutting oh, your car. Oh, really? It was so funny. We were like, no. Uh, and you can't drive because they surround Yeah, they swarm you. I have a bit, bit of a picture of them. Um, but I'm going to tell you all a little bit about uh, kind of how we got out here today and what the role of the stagecoach has been in the park for the last 140 some odd years. So, can anybody tell me when the park was established? 70. On the park. Then about 1883, three things happened that changed it. So, the, the Union Pacific Rail Spur was built from Livingston, Montana to Cinnabar, Montana. Which, Cinnabar is a little bit north of Gardner if anybody came in that way. The uh, Army Corps of Engineers got real good at building roads and they came in and developed the Howard Eaton Trail into a road system, kind of based it off of that trail and ended up being the figure six loop. Everybody knows today it's the figure eight loop. The Dunraven Pass between Canyon Village and Tower was not built yet because uh, they didn't think the horses could make it up and down that mountain. And so anyway, they built that and then the stagecoaches were finally introduced into the park. So a typical stagecoach tour, just what everybody wanted to do now, they'd rather be behind a horse and on top of it. You'd start 
at the rail spur in Cinnabar and you'd get on one of these tally-ho stagecoaches. Back then, they had four rows of seating on the roof and they could comfortably fit 36 people, comfortably. Anyway, they take you from, from Cinnabar up to the Grand Hotel at Mammoth Hot Springs. Anybody come in from that way? The Gardner to Mammoth? Okay, yeah, you know that real windy road you come up? That was actually the old stagecoach road they used to ride up. Mm. But they would take that at about full speed to get momentum coming up, but also because these stagecoach drivers at the time, they liked to have fun. They were called savages. They were some colorful characters. They liked to drink a lot, party a lot, and they would make this uh, stagecoach ride an almost an amusement park ride, or at least that's what they thought. It was more for their fun than anybody else's. <laughs> but they'd take these turns so fast, sometimes stagecoaches would go up on two wheels, They'd come around in real tight terms, but they were also the, the highest paid people in the park because they were so skilled. They were driving teams of six up horses at the time. That was kind of a hard skill to get back then, especially on these mountain roads. So they were paid $50 an hour plus tips, which was higher than what the superintendent of the park was getting paid. And keeping with tradition, that's what they like to pay us today. <laughs> so anyway, you get on one of these uh, Surrey coaches after that, you get to the Grand Hotel, you'd spend the night there, you get on a Surrey coach and go on a five day trip around the park, and then they take you back and you get on the train and go home. This went on until about 1914, can anybody tell me what happened in 1914 that might have uh, interfered with stagecoach travel? Automobiles. Automobile, exactly. Uh, they didn't allow automobiles at first because they didn't think it would do well with the horses and everything, which they were correct. But they didn't keep people from sneaking in anyway because who owns this park? We do. We pay taxes, right? And we vote everybody in. Anyway, so people went from, say, Idaho, would spend $300 on their car to get up here, and then they were told they had to pay $200 to get on a stagecoach. They couldn't tour it in their own car. So people just started sneaking in anyway. First car it snuck in, actually broke down and had to get pulled out by a team of horses. We like that fact around here. <laughs> but anyway, the um, 1915 National Park Service decided they'd let it happen. Just uh, they couldn't keep everybody out and it was making people mad and people weren't wanting to stay here. So they let people come through in their cars. But they told the drivers of these cars to honk their horns whenever they were coming around these big mountain corners to make sure that the stagecoach drivers knew that somebody was coming. But a lot of people would forget to do that, and they do it last minute. Put yourself in the mind of a horse that time that's never seen a car in their life before. And this is those Model T's we're talking about. You can see you got this big rattling metal box with a loud engine and big glowing headlights and the old Ooga horn barreling down at you and screaming at you, basically. So a horse will pick the path of least resistance, right? So some of these roads are straight up one side, straight down the other. So where do you think they went? Down. Straight down the other. There were more wrecks that year in 1915 than any of the years before and since put together. And so in 1916, National Park Service said stagecoaches are the past, automobiles are the future, and they put them all in storage, and some of them were burned for the war effort to get the metal off of them up at Swan Lake Flats. Now, about 1950s, a genre movie came out that became very popular. Can anybody take a guess what that might be? Western. The Western movies, exactly. So everybody want to be John Wayne, everybody want to be a cowboy again, I mean who wouldn't? This is the coolest job in the world, right? So people wanted to come out here and see Yellowstone the old fashioned way and Yellowstone said well, what better way to do that than bring these stagecoaches out of storage and start giving tours. So they started doing tours at Old Faithful until about 1986 an appraiser came out and looked at these stagecoaches that they had brought back out and noticed that the uh, one, they were historically priceless. I mean, they're, they're historic value. They're some of the last originals left. But anyway, he's also valued them at over $150,000 a piece in 1986, if they were still in working condition. And the oldest one they were running at that time was built in 1884. So not only were they very valuable, they were also very unsafe by modern standards. Back then, stagecoaches used to have um, bison hide leather suspension. Now we have nylon suspension. Like I said previously, they had that four row of seating on the top. They took that out because it was just too dangerous to have people up there. We also added some skid plates on the back in case we do lose a wheel out here, the boys could drag y'all home just fine. One team could pull all three of these stagecoaches. They're that strong. But anyway, the biggest thing and my most favorite thing they put in there was a hydraulic brake system. Used to, back in the day, they had what was called a stick and block brake system. You'd push on a stick and then push a block of wood on the back wheel to slow you down. 
So let's say you're coming down a big mountain hill or you have a runaway team and you start putting that brake on. What happens when wood meets metal at high rates of speed and pressure? Burns up the wood. A fire. What happens when you put a fire behind a team of horses that didn't want to stop in the first place? <laughs> Dylan likes to call that an Amish Ferrari. You don't know where you're going, but you're getting there really, really quickly. And so anyway, we also changed out, instead of the six up Indiana Pacer horses, we started using draft teams. The draft horses, they don't have to go far or fast, they just gotta pull weight, and they gotta do it repetitively. And they're the, the perfect job for them. They love doing it. And um, yeah, y'all have become over 140 years, part of over 140 years of stagecoach tradition and history in the park. You've also joined the less than 1% of people that actually venture out into the back country. So give yourselves a round of applause. All right, everybody got their pictures made? Any questions? Get a Any questions? Of the horse good? All right, cool. We're going to hop yeah. up and get on back. Did you horses right here? Yeah. Take off. That's it, that's all we go. I think we go back, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. That would go a lot further than that. A handful for you there. <laughs> <laughs> you're the helper, you're the nanny. Yeah. Yeah. You're helping me. Yeah, you keep going. I'm about 15. Check it out. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun thing. Yeah, you, you, we don't want you to smoke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you look at all the money, yeah. you don't want, you don't want, we don't want, we don't want, we don't want, we don't want you to smoke, you know? But we always say you are out candy.
at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful horse. Asian food is good. The Asian food don't get you. Yeah, that's you know, that's the only thing like that. Be careful, you eat too much wine up, I think. <laughs> hey, I'm 62. Thank you. And yes, she does the same diet. Right every day. Asian steak. You make like the your own sushi out of fish? She does. I mean, I'll huh? buy her all the time. Yeah. 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 Young and, and fit. Yeah. I love sushi. I my wife is once a week. Those are good, yeah. yeah. The, the short shabu. rib? Yes. Oh. <laughs> the best and the shabu shabu. You can cook your own meat right yes. at the table. Yeah. Right? We need more like Asian sauce though. I know. We don't have the flavor. We have the grocery store too. Yeah, we gotta go. go to Asian yeah. yeah, we gotta go to uh, H Mart. Yeah. Are you getting me more? We can buy it. We can't buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't yeah. know if I can eat eighty-five so bucks. Like, yeah. Be on that meal. Yeah. 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 That's what I was thinking. I can't, I can't eat that. You can give me one cow. You made us out. Yeah. Ready, ready, please. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. So when they're here, we can be ready to go. He Okay. 